Imagine, if you would, a tattoo that delivers much-needed drugs or a fetal heart monitor that doesn't need electricity. Those are two of the many innovations that have arisen from the latest initiative by Grand Challenges Canada. This is an organization that works to improve the health and well-being of people in developing countries by promoting innovation. Today, the group is awarding more than $2 million in grants as part of its Rising Stars program. I spoke this morning with the CEO of Grand Challenges Canada, Dr. Peter Singer. I want to talk about the Rising Stars program, but explain what it is that your organization does and how it does that. So Grand Challenges Canada is a new organization, just celebrated our first birthday. Uh, Congratulations. (laughs) Thank you very much. Uh, We fund global health innovations, like the examples that you talked about that make a big difference to people's health in the developing world, and we're funded... Uh, by the federal government and the foreign aid envelope. And you do it by creating capacity in a couple of different countries, again, through innovation, but also through building the capacity in those countries where that innovation is needed. Exactly. And through open calls uh, for proposals, looking for excellent innovators in developing countries, working sometimes with Canadians. And the Canadian Rising Stars actually is aimed to unleash the innovative capacity of young Canadian scientists to help tackle these global health challenges. So tell us about the Rising Stars program and what it would do very specifically? So this is our first round uh, where we're releasing uh, 19 uh, projects uh, out of about 80 that applied. And these are $100,000 each. Uh, You gave some examples, the tattoo that gives medicine, the wind-up fetal heart monitor. There's 19 of these from coast to coast. And these are uh, projects that are funded at $100,000 each, essentially to, to say whether this bold idea really works. We're going to end up funding about 60 of these. And uh, of those 60, we'll back maybe one in four with a million dollars, if it's showing to be working, mm. to really get into the field and make a difference. That's really interesting. And I want to talk about that idea of, of giving people the opportunity to experiment and maybe even fail. But what are some of the uh, other pitches that people have made that you thought were worth $100,000? Well, some of the ones that we're, uh, we're, we're funding, um, some of the other ones are, for example, a diagnostic test that's just paper. You know, diagnosis is so important to mm-hmm. figuring out the cause of somebody's illness. A child comes with a fever, for instance, in, in Africa. Is that malaria? Is it something else? So imagine a diagnostic test that's just a piece of paper. Another example from, uh, from Toronto is a a computer tablet that's used in a refugee camp in Haiti to uh, do HIV counseling, motivational counseling uh, for for women. So there's just a couple of other of the ideas. What's the criteria for the ideas when you'll even begin to to, to consider them and let them through that first gate? We had, obviously, several criteria, peer review, but it really boils down to one thing which is creativity, innovation, and bold ideas. These are supposed to be really, really creative ideas. So just take the wind-up uh, radio, for, mm-hmm. the, the wind-up... Uh, heart monitor. The wind-up heart monitor, for example. You know, throughout Africa, you've got wind-up radios. Uh, here, we can get wind-up flashlights when we go camping. But to take that concept and apply it to a fetal heart monitor... So instead of getting uh, information and entertainment on your radio, you're actually able to save lives. And 2 million children, uh, newborns, die needlessly right around the time of birth. So it's a big problem. So taking that idea from a radio, putting it on a fetal heart monitor to save lives, that's a really bold, creative step. Or the tattoo. You know, you think about tattoos in other contexts, (laughs) Uh, not exactly in the context of delivering drugs for a a neglected disease called visceral leishmaniasis. So that's the sort of boldness and creativity we're seeing on the part of young Canadian scientists. The sense of creativity is often not funded um, in the metrics-based society that we live in, in part because it depends on the potential and the possibility of failure. How do you incorporate failure in the work that you do and, and giving people the room to fail and the room to experiment? Well, uh, by doing what I described, putting a small bet on a really creative idea that could succeed, could fail, and then the ones that show that they're succeeding back them with significantly more funds so they make a real difference where they're needed in the, uh, in the, in the developing world. But it's a real step to say, you know what? This may not work, but we think it's interesting enough that we want to try and see if it does. We want to try and give you a little bit of rope to to, to see what you can do with it. Yep, it is a step. And, uh, you know, this is really where this program is focused. It's really what we encourage the the reviewers to look like. You know, yesterday or a couple of days ago, Bill Gates was speaking in a symposium uh, of Nobel laureates. Mm -hmm. And he said that he 
really tries to look for the idea. And sometimes he, when they're picking projects, they don't even want to look at the person's CV. They just want to look at the essence of the idea. Is it bold? Is it creative? You know, now these are all ideas that have a pretty good chance of succeeding. Uh, but we need to take on risk to innovate, and we need to do things differently and better to make a difference. How do you ensure that the idea moves beyond just simply an idea and actually is implemented? Well, in 18 months, these ideas will come back for review, and those ones that actually are moving forward that have succeeded will get sufficiently more uh, backing, the million dollars. And, you know, maybe uh, just to comment on why we would release this on Canada Day, mm -hmm. uh, we'd release these on Canada Day because there are an amazing number of really bold and innovative ideas, really wonderful scientists, many of them young around the country. And uh, uh, we want to celebrate that. The ideas are inspiring. Uh, for me, they create a sense of pride. It's something we can really be proud of uh, in, in the country about these young Canadian scientists making a huge difference in big health problems in the developing world. It's something that we should fund as well. Um, we're going to follow this. I think this is a really interesting approach, in part because it has that idea of experimentation, and you do reward creativity, which is often drummed out of people when you're just looking at dollars and cents. Absolutely. And, you know, our tagline is bold ideas for humanity. Mm. So you need both the creativity and the idea of a big challenge uh, that's serious and important that you can solve. That's Dr. Peter Singer, the CEO of Grand Challenges Canada. We'll put up information about the program on our website if you go to cbc.ca slash Morning.